This video looks at how you can form transfer function equivalents to state space models. Previous videos then introduce the concept of state space models and it's useful to consider to what extent these can be represented by an equivalent transfer function because putting things in transfer function form can be very useful at times. This video introduces a standard process for doing this. A reminder then of what we've covered so far. A general state space model includes two vector equations. You'll see the first vector equation includes the dynamics x dot equals ax plus bu and is defined through the matrices a and b. The second vector equation defines the output and is defined through the matrices c and d. The Plast transforms then. We're going to take it for granted that viewers know the basics of Laplace and therefore recognize expressions such as the following. If I do the Laplace of a signal x of t, and I've used lowercase x for time domain, then I can use an uppercase x to represent the equivalent Laplace transform. If I wanted Laplace of dx dt, that can be written as s times the x of s minus x of 0. Now, because we're going to be dealing with transfer function models, we're not going to worry about these initial conditions because they don't come into transfer function models. And what we're going to do is use the definitions above and apply them to the state space model and see what happens. Here's the state space model again then. So x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx plus du. And all we're going to do is take Laplace of every term in these equations. And we use capitals for Laplace and lowercase for time domain. So you know which is which. Taking Laplace then of this first equation, x dot equals ax plus bu, you end up with this x dot becomes S capital X, AX becomes A capital X, and BU becomes B capital U. Similarly, if you take Laplace of the output equation, in essence all we're doing is going to replace the lowercase by the uppercase, so we've got the same equation. Now I can solve these by rearranging this equation here which has got x of s in two places, so I can rearrange that to solve for x of s. And so this is what I get. First of all, I get si minus capital A times x equals bu, and if I then put the x on its own, I get this equation here, that x equals s minus a, si minus a inverse times b times u. And if I want to get y, all I've got to do is plug this solution for x into this expression here. So you see I'm going to get y equals c times si minus a inverse b plus capital D all times u. So going from state space to transfer function is relatively straightforward and the expressions you need are summarized here. An example then to illustrate this process. Here's a state space model. You'll see I've got my matrix A and my matrix B and I want to put this into Laplace transforms. So I remind myself of the key expression. Here it is. The transfer function to get both states is given by SI minus A inverse times capital B. Now I've done that matrix inverse for you by inspection rather than wasting your time with that. So you'll see that SI minus A inverse is given by this matrix up here divided by this denominator down here. You, now you can check that yourself in slower time if you want, but it's just number crunching. And the B is still there. I can now multiply that out and I end up with this as the result. So the transfer function relating the input force to the states x1 and x is given by the what I've circled here in blue and it's clearly a vector transfer function so there's two different parts to it. What about the mass spring damper? Well the mass spring damper had a state space model like this and again I'm going to say here that I'm particularly interested in an output which is defined as Vx which is Cz. So my transfer function now is given by C times Si minus A inverse 
times b. Now again, I've done the algebra for you rather than wasting your time with it, but you can check it later. So if you look at this part here, si minus a inverse, you'll see you get this square matrix here in the numerator and you get this denominator here. Now c is just an identity matrix, so that's not going to change anything. So all I need to do now is multiply by b and I end up with this result over here. So remark, finding transfer functions by hand is not recommended in general as it's rather tedious and you'll notice I deliberately didn't go through the details of the matrix inverse because matrix inverse is a pain in the nut. So what we're going to recommend is that students use a computer. We're going to give some examples with MATLAB to show how straightforward this is if you're prepared to use software. There's a warning here, however, when you do use MATLAB, it will only do one input at a time. So if you've got x dot equals ax plus bu and your u vector is things like u1, u2, u3, you can only do each of those inputs one at a time on MATLAB. Here's the code then. On MATLAB, you'll see what I've done is I've defined an A matrix, a B matrix, a C matrix and a D matrix. So MATLAB needs all four of those to be defined even when the D is zero, which is often the case. And then you use this particular piece of code here. You'll see it's called SS2TF and hopefully it's obvious that shorthand for state space to transfer function. So then you put in your A, B, C, D matrices and this number here specifies which input you are interested in. Now this system only has one input so I've just put one. And the output you get from this is the numerator and denominator of the transfer function. So let's have a look at the result. There you go. You see the numerator has got these coefficients and the denominator has got these coefficients. And if you want to know how to interpret those, you remember that the way MATLAB works is you basically take the power from the number of terms. So D has got three terms, so it represents a quadratic. The first coefficient is the maximum power, so I've got 1 times x s squared. The second coefficient, the next power, so minus 6 times s. And the last coefficient is the constant, so plus 11. Similarly, for the numerator, you'll see, although it seems to be three terms, the first coefficient is zero, so in fact, this is first order. So the one goes with the s, and the minus 16 goes with the constant, and therefore you can see our transfer function is given by s minus 16 of s squared minus 6s plus 11. Second example then. And again, you'll see I've entered the A, B, C, D matrices, but here I've made it a bit more complicated because I've made the A matrix 3 by 3. So if you wanted to invert this by hand, you're beginning to have quite a painful job. But I stick it into MATLAB and it gives me the coefficients of the numerator and the coefficients of the denominator without any difficulty. And again, you'll see what's this equivalent to? Well, you'll see the numerator the 2 goes there, the 8.5 goes there, the 5.1 goes there. So you can write the numerator down by inspection and in a similar way you can see the denominator by inspection. So if you're prepared to use MATLAB tools, this is relatively straightforward. So remark, the denominator of a transfer function has a clear analogy to the eigenvalues of the matrix A. And in fact it's clear that the eigenvalues of A must be the system poles. This is a really important observation. So the eigenvalues of the state space matrix A must be the system poles. So we'll show that here. The denominator of a matrix inverse is the determinant. So when you look at what we did with the Laplace transforms here, look at this expression, you'll see I've got an SI minus A inverse in here. And those of you who remember how to do matrix inverse will remember that you end up with an adjoint divided by the determinant. So the determinant ends up in the denominator. Well, the determinant of SI minus A is given by this expression here. You'll see I've got the determinant SI minus A. Because that's going into the denominator, this must correspond to the poles. 
Now if I was to calculate the eigenvalues of A, I would be using an expression a bit like this. The determinant of lambda i minus A equals zero. And what you will see is that these two expressions are exactly equivalent. So what you've noticed is the poles of the system are in fact the eigenvalues of the A matrix. So a summary. We've illustrated that it's straightforward in principle to find a transfer function model from a state-space model. But we've also emphasized this is not a pen and paper exercise in general due to the requirement for a matrix inverse. And I would recommend you use software tools. But the bottom line is if you've got this state space model, there it is, x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx plus du, then the transfer function model is given here. You've got c times si minus a inverse times b plus 